speaking of ladies, how's Cam's mom? Oh, let's oh, let's let's, let's, let's so right in the camp's not even in the country. He's not even in the country, but let's warm up to it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is one time and one time only. It's hashtag beer time. Welcome to the show. That's all about news, politics, and sports. Really? <laughs> no, not really. It's maybe one day we'll venture off and have little subcategories. But no, this is the show all about beer, and I am sitting in a wonderful brew pub. So yeah, we, we call it a brew pub. And it's probably one of my favorite brew pubs in Cape Town. There is a storm approaching, so you might hear some rattling, some crashing, but hopefully uh, more drinking and slurping than anything else. I'm joined by the lovely and beautiful Greg Casey of Banana Jam Afro Caribbean Brewing Company. Greg, this is probably your fourth or fifth time on the I think so. hashtag beer time? I have, that is true. This time I'm going to try and talk less. Well, and make more sense. That is appreciated. Thank you very much. I, one can only hope that you will keep your promise. And then joining us for the first time, making her debut on Hashtag Beer Time, is the wonderful, talented and gifted and, let's be honest, boss of ACDC. That's the truth. Rochelle, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's, uh, I can't believe it's taking us, well, me taken me this long to get you on the show but it's okay we just clarified that earlier. greg has uh kept you hidden for quite some time i have to people keep trying to steal it from me ah that old chestnut well i'm sure we can uh divulge other information <laughs> or, <laughs> but let's let's us for those of you who don't know we are doing a recording and we're also doing a video Something so you can wave at us. It's not live. So one day, one day, guys, it'll be live. Greg, you're drinking a beer. I am. Which is what's what's unusual about it is that the fact that you're the only one drinking a beer. So let's. <laughs> Sorry, I was testing a beer. You were testing I'll a beer. It, I'll put it away. I, there we go. I do want to know about that. In oh. fact, let's talk about that now. This is a new beer that you guys have just made. It's a something. From what I gather, something happened that you weren't too happy with, so you twisted it. We tweaked you, it, we and we experimented. made a completely new beer. Yeah, we were experimenting with um, some new products, and you know, in, there's nothing wrong with a beer. It's just it's not exactly what we wanted, so we decided it's a nice base beer to experiment with. So yeah, a bit of passion fruits, different hops. So we split. We started to split the beer down into smaller quantities that we can then dry hop with different hop styles, try different extracts and aromas and things like that. So just it's just how to have a bit of fun, I suppose. It's it's probably, for the people listening and watching, it's probably one of the, if not the fruitiest smelling beers I've ever come across. It's, if you handed me this beer blindfolded, I would have told you it's something from a, a kiddie's lunchbox, like a, 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 fruit, wow. a fruit juice. Oh, there comes the there comes the rain. There comes I the rain. I think this could be a problem. It gets noisy in here with the rain. Oh, really? Well, that's fine. I think people will uh, maybe just appreciate. We we might just have to uh, talk up. But let's let's crack on with the show. Let's open a delicious beer. Sure, I can hear that rain. But you know what? The Is show, there anything we can do? The show must go on. The, the show, show must go on. on. Let me just increase the volume. Is that better? Not at all. Oh dear. Well, oh, there the rain stopped. How's that? Okay. Okay, so let's crack on while we can. have a break. Oh, oh, we can. We've got a bit of a theme today. It is hoppy beers. Now, Greg, I know that uh, you always wonder what kind of beers I bring back when I go I, overseas. I do. And uh, sometimes they make their way to our meetings. Sometimes they don't. Uh, but this is one such occasion where it's it's I have some beers reserved for hashtag beer time for when you join. So this is a brewery called Lovech from Norway. It's an easy. It's the beer's called Easy, and it's well, it really is an easy pale ale. At oh, I like 4. the can 5%. design. It's a beautiful can. Let me have a look at this. For those of you don't know, it's like the 
See, that's what I've been wanting to do. It's beautiful. It's, it's like a nice feeling yeah. paper on a on a almost like a, to make it look like it. a cutout. Yeah, it looks like a cutout. So the can comes cool, through. Yeah. I don't think it is a cutout. It's it might not be. A cutout. It's, it's not. just been printed like that. It's just a, like a. Oh no, it isn't. Yeah, you're right. It's foil. a shiny little foil thing. But that's what we can do. That's awesome. What we should do. Shall we drink it? Let's drink it. Oh, got some on my mic. Oh, it smells very nice. So, while we are drinking and listening to the rain, because it sounds intense on my mic, I don't know what you guys think, but I can't hear it. That's good. Rochelle, oh. let's let's get you involved here because otherwise Greg's just going to talk over all of us. Um, beer and brewing. Mm. Why? Why not? Were you? Did Greg just say one day, listen, you need he needs a hand, or did you actually put your hand up uh, and say let's let's give I, this a go? I actually put my hand up. I applied here on some information from a friend of mine who used to work here who said that there was a gentleman very eager in terms of teaching and things like that. Was and that Sean? No, it was actually um, no, Alexia. the guy teaching. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Somewhere between Sean and Greg, I got a bit of a beer education. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she said that uh, Greg was keen on teaching people, and I had no idea where to learn. There's no school really in South Africa that does brewing as like a course going to do microbiology or something like that. So I was like, well, why the hell not? Let's give it a try. Applied here. Greg was actually in Bali for the first month of me being here. Even when is he I not in Bali? Hired. Now. <laughs> this is actually and rare. it's raining. It's actually rare that we have this uh, this time for, with you. Thank you. I'll let you get to the airport just now. So we hurry this up. <laughs> um, yeah. And then he came back and I asked and then came upstairs to have the Times a week on the off days. There we go. And so, I mean, we, we're talking now five years. Oh, how long? What, what no, kind of time? No, 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 no. I've only been full time now. Two Going years. on two years, yeah. Wow. So, the brewery's been around for about four or five years, I think. What, yeah. 2014? Yeah. So, we've been upstairs since late 2014, early 2015. Um, and Rochelle came on. Maybe that's why I'm getting confused. Yeah, okay. and then Rochelle yeah. came on two years ago. But Rochelle's been pretty much full-time head brewer for about a year now, just over a year. Almost two years. November will be two years. Two years is, is on your own? Yeah. Wow. But then you've been here longer then? You... Yeah, but I've only been full-time upstairs before I was... So it's like you've been now what? Like... I've been uh, almost three years. Yeah. Since the end of 20, 2016. August 2016, well, actually. That's when you started upstairs? Yeah. So you started cleaning? Well, it's when you, I think... I don't started really taking know. more holidays, Greg. You started. I'm getting take, old. Taking a bit of a backseat. Mm. But look, uh, enough about you, Greg. Yeah, um, please. But I mean, Rochelle, you've kind of, besides having uh, the the two Tweedledum and Tweedledees as your uh, mm. parents of, of the the beer world. I'm talking about Greg and, and Sean. Mad love to, to Sean. Um, yeah, like you said, you kind of also had to teach yourself um, and, and get to a position now where you are the head brewer. That is your your, your title. Does does has Pretty Greg much. given you that? Yeah. Um, and now you are making some absolutely amazing beers. Uh, it's I, I would like to, I, we're not going to clap on the show, but I would like to give you a little. Thank you, thank you. Um, and it's I awesome that we have it's awesome that we have an. Um, more female brewers coming through the ranks. We see a yes. lot more. I think going back to the roots of brewing, where women used to do the brewing. Yes, exactly. Until when men were lazy, mass corporations came through and said, "No, we can make profits out of this." But we're talking ages ago. I think that's where the whole uh, witch notion comes from. How witches and brewing were so closely intertwined. Pots of cauldrons. Is, is that that is a true story? Yes. yes. Uh, but you're not a witch. She can be. Sometimes. <laughs> In the morning when she's grumpy. <laughs> Only because I have to wait to have coffee. Oh, but let's. Uh, th this is a great beer. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's got a nice fruitiness. It's got a nice nose. 
it's super light. You know what? And I, I, I say this with the, the greatest amount of respect for both your brewery and this brewery overseas. But if you had to take the label off and tell me that this was one of your beers, I would believe you. I would, or let's just say I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Why I'm saying that is because I think our beers, the, a few of our beers in South Africa, which are getting up to an international standard. A lot of our beers are. And I'm not just trying to float both of your boats here. No, no, no. Not just us. I think um, every time I come back from from the States and, and, you know, I think the States is a a great one to to relate to because we're on the hoppy sort of phase at the moment and I'll drink beers there, come back here and then I'll drink beers here and I'll be like, well, you know what? They're just as good. Yeah. You know, there's some that are better. I know Sean just got back from Canada and he said he went to some dreadful breweries in Canada, which it's never great to, to go, oh, it's so nice to see that other people are doing badly, but um, it's really good to know that um, we're not the only ones who have great breweries and then maybe not so breweries. It happens everywhere. So, you know, and we're getting to that standard now where the guys that are passionate about beer are making good beer and um, the guys who are not are making maybe average beer and people are starting to notice the difference and I think that's important. True. Very true. Let's crack on with the first of um, three of your beers. Like I said, we've got a bit of a theme today. We're going a bit of a hoppy, hoppy roots. So let's go on to the hop session, which is your... Would you say it's your flagship? It used to be. Well, I suppose it's... Uh, like Technically, yes. How do you d- define flagship? Is it the best-selling beer? Is it the most popular? I would is say it one of the beginning ones? The one that you've always got on tap that you're never going to run out of. The one that... <laughs> uh, we, we laugh because we, we've been running out of beer quite a lot. Um, not because the shell's lazy and doesn't want to brew. It's because we've, uh, we've had a... We've be, we started to get a really great following um, at Banana Jam for our beers. Again, it does help that um, that we only sell our beer here, so people have to come and get, like, few in the League of Beers mixed case, and there are a few cans going into the market, but 90% of it is here. So, um, so it's really great that uh, that we, we run out of beer. It means people mm. are enjoying it. And, and yeah, I think Hop Session, Hop Session started still when we, uh, myself and, and a few other people did... Uh, what was the thing we did? The craft? No, no, we're going back to before Africa Caribbean. We're going to um, the festivals I used to do and when we used to brew beer with Boston. And we actually oh, wow. brewed this beer first in 2012, I think maybe. Um, maybe earlier than that with Boston breweries. And mm. we did it, did it with the first time we ever brewed it was back then. And the recipes changed over the years. But it is definitely the beer that sort of kicked off Afro-Caribbean and kicked off like our commercial beer. beer. Why, why have you, and you, you've kind of just hinted at the answer, but my question is why are you guys canning when you um, have 90% of your sales indoors? Is it not just tap? No. Okay, so do people actually come in and buy cans? Take we have we have an off-sales license here. Okay, so we can sell out the door. So you can come here, you can drink our beer on tap, and if you like it, you can take it home in a growler. If you want a mix of beer, you can take a mix pack of um, of cans home. What's the and obviously cans travel well and things like that. So now, I hope the listeners understand. From what I know, you need different licenses. You need on consumption, turn or off consumption. So, uh, yeah, a liquor store has off-consumption, and you may not drink on-premises. Yep. A restaurant has on-consumption. You may not bring your own liquor onto the premises and consume it. You have to consume the liquor that is on that premises. Generally, with a brewery license, you, you, you can apply for just a brewery license, but generally you apply for everything, which is on-consumption, mm. off-consumption, micro-manufacturing, which is actually the making of the beer, and distribution, which allows you then to distribute your beer as well. So you need the license to distribute the beer, you need the license to make your beer, and then you need a license that allows people to drink your beer on the premises and allow you to 
take the beer off the premises. So our restaurant downstairs has um, is now part of, of the license. So, okay. so you know now we have on consumption, off consumption, and micro manufacturing and distribution, even though we don't think. But when you apply for your license, it's no extra cost. You apply for a license with all those on the license, and the cost is applying for the license, your lawyer's fees, all the things like that. Your cost yearly is just slightly different. So yes. uh, it's more for a brewing license with all those attachments. Sure. Um, but actually applying for the license itself, if you're going to go through a lawyer, you might as well apply for everything. And I know that's, I mean, it's two things here. I know that's doing it step by step is probably the better way, or let's just say the way that the least going ins through insane way. Like I know that uh, Roscoe from Happy Days Brewery, he actually had a restaurant first like you. And when he built his brewery, he asked for, he had a liquor license for that to sell beer. On consumption. But then he asked, when he went to the liquor board, he asked, asked for an extension of the license in terms of area and uh, to brew on, on, on site. And it, I mean, I think it took him something ridiculous like two or three months to get that license. That's quick. Whereas when you're hearing guys who are applying right from the gates on, in terms of a brewing license, it's taken six months to a year. Six months if you're lucky. Um, a year if you look at any your first time first time you apply for any liquor type of liquor license does take time you yeah. have to put ads in newspapers and wait for people to either complain or object or, or whatever and if no one objects then it goes back to the liquor board mm. which doesn't sit every day so then you've got to wait for them to sit and if there's any query then it comes back to you and then it has to go back to the liquor board again and then it takes an every so pretty much every query will take you another month. So some people just get lucky. I've heard of people getting liquor licenses in four four months. Yeah. I've heard people taking four or five years to get a liquor license just because of the zoning of the property or, or something different. And then again, it depends on which province you're in because every every zoning is and licensing is different for every province. What last question on the licensing bits? I hate talking about licensing. So yes. Last thing. I know that in the States, I think it's the States, or in most other countries, you need a separate entrance, a separate counter, a separate till to purchase uh, from the brewery. So Is we have it upstairs. Okay. Yeah, so we can do it that way with the upstairs. Um, a lot of, you, you need a separate area where people purchase the liquor from. Overseas, you can just purchase it over the bar. Yeah. In a lot of places. Um, and again, it depends on, on the state you're in. Um, you know, in South Africa... Um, we, I can get a liquor, li a brewing license in Harfield Village, even though in Har where, where I am in Harfield Village, it is a business hub. So I'm not in a residential area, even yeah. though it looks like I am. The area that Banana Jam is in, there's a it's a demarcated area of about a block and a half, which is uh, demarcated as business. Mm. Um, the same as Claremont and the CBD. Um, so I can get a liquor license there. But in Johannesburg, it doesn't work like that. You can't get a, um, a liquor license to brew beer in a business district. It has to be an industrial district. So each province here is different and how you, and the, the laws are different to how you can serve your beer and out of where and, and things like that. So it's, it's always good to have a lawyer. Yes. So someone, I've spoken enough someone, now. I'll ask Rochelle a question. Someone who knows what they're doing. Speaking of someone who knows what they're doing, Michelle, thank you. That beer was delicious. Um, it's gone, mm. which means so it's mine. That's nice, isn't it? It is nice. I like that shape. Mm. How are you guys doing with the sound? I'm fine. I'm can okay? you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Even me? Yeah, I, I, okay. yeah you might need to speak up a little bit. Let's talk loudly, Michelle. Well, you know, I try to, and then Greg just yeah, talks yeah. for the next oh. like 15 minutes anyway, so. Let's have the next one. Coconuts! Rochelle, you can talk us through this coconut IPA. Uh, what's the, where does the coconut come in? As in when we add coconuts? Where, what, is, do you actually use coconuts? We do. We use actual coconut flakes that we toast. And then in a wonderful, wonderful procedure, open up the fermenter and chuck <laughs> them in. Are you allowed to tell us or is it secret? 
<laughs> oh, I just told you. If you want to really throw good. coconut in your fermenter, go right ahead. You go right ask, ahead. And ask then, Rochelle about cleaning up afterwards. I was going to say, then please send me a video of how long it takes you to clean your fermenter at the end. Okay, so does it get sticky? It's, well, because we dry hop a part of it as well. And with four kilos, we quite a lot. It's about four kilos that we add to 400. Um, Liters. Ten, was it 10 grams a litre of coconut? Yeah. It makes one giant hell of a mess that blocks my drain almost every single time without fail. Coconut. But it is worth it because and I don't want to use it. Exactly. Okay, so Greg... Coconut's got to go somewhere. Not only does Greg insist on you making it, but it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a top seller. Oh, oh, I would make it. I just don't want to clean up afterwards. <laughs> I think it's worth it, and I would rather... I prefer the taste of the actual coconut flakes as opposed to the coconut extract in this particular beer anyway um, and for me the hour and a half it would take for me to clean up all the coconuts it's, it's two it's and a half worth three it. hours it's, it's, but it's worth it it's quite a when you th when, when i think of coconuts i think more or if, if, if you're pairing it with a beer i would have assumed you would have maybe paired it with something more towards the malt side of a beer but you guys have paired it with an IPA. You've made a coconut IPA. Why Why did you stick with that? Or why did you not maybe think, I don't know, a porter? Coconut porter? We've done a few other coconut beers. We've done, well, the, we've done coconut stouts. The, we did a coconut bourbon stout, which was we've aged in uh, Jack Daniels barrels. That was very nice. Oh, lovely. Um, I think I had some of that. I think we've done a coconut. I think I did a coconut porter once before Rochelle's came on board with us no, but, but again I actually can't even remember why we did a coconut IPA it's been a long time ago. I suppose IPAs were cool and um, we wanted to be cool cool and like tropical. and tropical because of banana jam and the name is Afro-Caribbean and every time I think of Caribbean I think of coconuts <laughs> so you guys use coconuts in your beer yes, coconuts do. lots and lots of, of coconuts. Painstaking coconuts. Should we should we ask the question of who if you guys were the first to, to brew? We coconuts? are the first. Drifter Brewing Company, <laughs> just so you know. I uh, Yes, Drifter. We are the first. You are the second. It's okay to be number two, don't worry about it. You do now now I'm gonna have to get them on the show and then ask them. That's the fine. Question. Yeah, they can ask me. I'll play them a clip and then see what they say. See what they say. And then we can go through social media. Because social media is lying. the proof of everything. I hate social media. When when it's when it's bad. But when it's good, it's good. You're looking at my it's still recording, which is good. It's just <laughs> looking. Um So yes, a lot so, of hops, a lot of coconut. It does have a bit of a in a good way, an oiliness, like a slight slight coating, but it's not horrible it's it's not overwhelming it's not leaving you i don't again we don't want the coconut to be that, that bitterness actually comes through and cleans it yeah um we don't want the coconut to be the um the master in the beer you know it's still an ipa i still i think i think with most of our beers here Rochelle, we want them to taste like beer you know be it if we do a raspberry porter or a coconut ipa or if it's not recording, it'd be really sad. <laughs> um, <laughs> talking shit for nothing. But yeah, we don't want um, we don't want our, our beers to be too on like even our bacon chili ale. It still tastes like beer. Yes. So I like like I've always liked it. You don't go that, full throttle. No, no, no. Some people some people like that, and I think in pastry starts, people expect if you're gonna do like a. Uh, like a New York cheesecake pastry start. It must taste like fucking New York cheesecake. Um, but I think that's not a beer for, for drinking. You can drink one or two, a couple of pints of this. Mm. And you won't end up after your second pint just be going, all I taste is coconut. Yeah. Uh, that's, you won't have that that's the key. On yeah, that's the key. Not to just taste coconut by the end of your pint. Well, I like it. Look, I like all your beers. And it's uh, it's the kind of place that I come to. Michelle's beers these days. The kind of place I come to where I just, I tend to forget what I'm drinking because I just drink so much. Uh, which I suppose is a good thing. <laughs> Maybe see something about that. 
in a good way. Uh, I want to... I am tempted to, to move along to the next bit, but I'm going to wait for you guys. You, you are ready. Oh, done. You're done. Oh. Let's, let's crack open the last of your beers. It's the Jungle Paradise. India Pell L. Uh, Greg, you said something about 7.2. 7 7.2. Rochelle, mm -hmm. speak loudly and clearly and tell me what's in this beer in terms of hops. We kept this one is super, super simple. Um, it's pretty much 98% and 2% is all multiple for that. You can tell people, I don't care. Literally just Pilsner, Crystal 250, Chinook and Columbus. That is it. That's quite simple. 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 Simplest beers are sometimes the best. Okay, so you focused obviously on two grains, two hops. Um, but it's still at 7.2%. This... Well, it's a lot of grain. This, I, I would imagine, I'm going to guess now, this is your... You, you made this according to a typical American IPA. Because an IPA in South Africa is not 7.2%. When was it? I came back from... Was it New York? Yes. New York? It was a new... Two years topic. ago. Last Ooh. year. Was mm. it last year? Yeah, we only started making this last year. Beginning of last year. Stinky. So, Stinky. Experiment. I remember, I remember I went to New York and um, Scofflaw was the first, mm. my surf, first brewery I stopped at. Scofflaw's Pale Ale is 6.5%, I think. <laughs> their beers, they've got a huge list of beers in, their, in the brew pub. Um, most of them above 7.5%. And, I, and the more I drank, well, that was the first brewery I stopped at. And I just was like, wow, you know, these are big beers. But they drink like 5% beers. Yeah. And the more I went around and the more I was trying different beers. Sorry, why am I saying New York? It was actually last year when I went to CBC. Um, oh, that was the, the beer the, conference. The beer yeah. conference at, in Atlanta. Yes. And I did a lot of drinking, a lot of drinking. And I came back and I was like, Michelle, I can't drink this watery beer. I need something above 7%. I need strong beer, and Rochelle was like, fine. Hence jungle. Hence the jungle. Jungle paradise. You'll notice every time Greg goes away and he comes back, there's a new beer that gets put on. Oh, okay. So You've just let us into the secret there. Speaking of which... Speaking of, sorry, speaking of which... When are you... I just spoke to Oscar five minutes ago, and he is sending me the recipe for the beer we brewed in Costa Rica. There so, by the, the time trip. this podcast comes out hopefully um tropical destination which is actually a 4.5 percent session ipa with shitloads of passion fruit mm. or um there's a uh, it's 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 a it's a costa rican passion fruit that mm. looks like it looks like an orange and it's twice the size of our um passion fruits we eat here yeah and but it's got the same contents of a passion fruit uh it's called Maracuya, and we did a Maracuya session IPA mm. with shitloads of Maracuya pulp in it, so that we're going to reproduce that here, and hopefully in about a month and a half, Tropical Destination will be out, just in time for midwinter, where you are cold and dreaming of the tropics. You can come and sit well, this, by the this fire and drink it. This podcast has come out next week. so I Okay, you'll have to wait longer. A little bit we'll only brew it next week. But Keep the people in suspense. So Greg, you are doing a bit of, you're still doing a bit of traveling. Lots you, of traveling. You still uh, surf beer travel, which yes. is your, now your new official uh, social media handle. I have changed my name to surf yes. beer travel. People have noticed, people are talking. When are you, when and where are you off again? I am off to Bali in two months. I'm hopefully going to be able to brew with one of the, there's a new brewery in Bali. Um, I need to contact them. I would love to brew there. If I can extend my stay, I might uh, see if I can hook up with maybe a brewery in Singapore as well. There's a really good brewery called, um, uh, I think it's Brow House or, um, or Beer House in, uh, in Clark Key. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been there before. They've got a great little um, 10 hectoliter system. They do really interesting beers like American style, Asian, like sort of Asian twists and things like that. I'd really like to brew with them. So, again, trying to trying to get um, our vacation fund series off the ground. It's it's a little bit harder 
to brew overseas and come back and brew here, but it's something we're really trying to do. I know it upsets Rochelle because I dive in here and, and mess up her brewing schedule. But <laughs> well, I was going to ask. things but like maracuya fruit, which once again will take me two hours to clean out of the fermenter. Uh, <laughs> but but you, it's worth it. Do, no, you, it is. do you ever take a holiday, Rochelle? <laughs> do you ever get invited to Bali or all these overseas destinations? You're asking some very interesting questions. Right okay, now. okay. Someone's got to look after Bruce. Someone's like, got to. You got to do your time. You, you got to do your you time. You see how the show is, it sometimes gets into politics yeah. and news and debates, and oh, it's good things to to, to to touch on. Oh, look at the time! <laughs> look at the time. <laughs> there goes Greg. There and goes Greg. No, well, it depends on how um, <laughs> when Greg comes back from Bali, but maybe I'll take some time off at the end of September. Just before season hits, I think you should go to um, go to PE and brew with Richmond Hill. Cheapness PE. That okay. So look, it's not that's, Bali. It's not Bali. Bali. It's not Bali. It's not Bali. It's, it's PE. But it is somewhere, and it's warmer in PE right now than it is here. Look, I think it's I think. baby steps, and I think you should take this opportunity, mm. do it, and then just push, push, push so out, of the, next, out of the out of the So by next year, I'll be going to Joburg, right? Sure. Can you imagine? PE. Can you handle? I'm not sure, hey? I don't know. She goes on holiday to um, Clarence. I oh, know it's a working holiday. <laughs> so would my leave days being taken up by Bruno? Mm. Uh, it's okay. I really sure, like Bruno. We get in, we into so some. Maybe uh, we guys should continue. Can we turn this mic off for five minutes? <laughs> let's let's. I like Le- Before we get onto this next and final beer, I want to ask either one of you about next week uh, when people listen to this actually it'll be today I suppose hopefully not raining it'll be on the Friday uh, the Jack Black yes it'll be the Friday Jack Black fest, uh, what is winter warm up winter, winter warm up the Jack Black winter warm up and there, there are quite a handful of different brewers going not just uh, you guys Metal Lane Metal Lane uh, Shackleton Old, Old Potters Old Pothead <laughs> so okay so there's definitely some some interesting brewers and beers going, but what's? Um, I think the what, lineup will be good. What What is it all about? Do you know anything about it? Is it, is it music? As, I, I imagine there's live music. music. There's food trucks. Um, Jack Black has done a few of them. Some have not been so good, but the ones that have been, you know, uh, that have been advertised well and people have known about, um, and there's always something new and different. I know we are going to bring. A couple of new. I think we might just do a whole bunch of new, interesting beers. Mm. We have a collaboration we just did with uh, Brooklyn Brewery, uh, with Mr. Garrett Oliver. Ah. Uh, it's a sorghum and nachi peel saison. Mm-hmm. We will bring a keg of that. So be there, try that. It'll be the first time it's in the, it's in trade. And we'll have a couple of new experimental stuff we're going to do. So yeah, we just. I think it's a nice, a nice festival to play around. Um, it's never too big that you can't engage with the crowd, which is really cool. People yeah. come and chat to you. And you know, when you get together and have a few beers with your mates that you don't see enough in the brewing industry, it's always fun. Oh, and I, I think I, it's free to get in. I don't think that's the case. In our, it's free to get in. I'm talking about, I don't think it's the case when you don't see enough of your friends in the brewing industry. You almost see too many too, of them. Too much, too much time. Or, but, uh, another another, another topic for another, another time. time. Exactly. Yeah. Let's get onto our final beer, which we need a bottle opener. <laughs> In this brewery. In this brewery. It's going to be tough. Thank you, young lady. This is a beer where, when I saw it, it, wasn't, it didn't strike me as a, a beer that I'd want to try, but the gentleman at the shop assured me that I needed to try it. It's very, it's very bling. It's very bling. It's called Pimp My IPA. It's an imperial IPA from a... A French brewery, if I am correct, it's called, the brewery is called La Debouche. 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 La Debouche. La Debouche. La Debouche. La Debouche. Um, I'm, I apologize if I'm getting my French wrong. Uh, but literally, we could call an expert. everything is in French, and I do not understand it. The only thing I it's do really understand good. is that it's an imperial IPA sitting at a casual 11%. Excuse me? It's a great way to start a Friday. Mmm, oh, damn. It's a 
Grigory? Where's my hat, Rochelle? We would have to speak to TJ. Oh, that's big and bold. Score with a nice 11%. Eh? I mean, is it casual? That's a one -off? It's, it's not. You don't see a lot of beers in South Africa at 11% in a bottle, in a can, ready for purchase. It really is. Yeah, okay, we go downstairs, we've got a few 10.5s. Okay, so you got Russian some... Imperial Stout, the one we, we do every year. I do a few. But I mean, it really is. It's just. Un, it's just Unheard that of. actually that's very nice it's wow and so you say that's french mm. you were in france i was in germany close uh, i'd imagine they just that's very nice got some beers because french beers can be very hit and miss yeah as as the italians uh which i discovered true, true. but i mean you, you don't get hey i mean you don't you won't go into a bottle store and find this, this tastes 11. like 8.5. You reckon? Mm. But that's a very sessionable 11% beer. You don't find beers over 10% in, in bottle stores. No, not Unless really. it's spe a speciality product where I'm talking 750 mils, beautifully wrapped, maybe even in a box. But you know, it's interesting. 400. What's interesting oh, is grand. that, um, grand. Rochelle, I think you'll agree with me, Jungle Paradise which is 7.2%, which is our biggest beer that we do besides our Russian Imperial Stouts and our, our really big beers. Look, we've got our dark beers, which are about 8, 8.5, and, and then 10, but those are the barrel-aged guys. Our core, core range beer, 7.2%, is now our biggest selling beer. It, is, it outsells Island Blonde, which is our entry-level beer, like our crossover beer. It outsells Hopsession, which is our hoppy... Mm like session a lot of people think hop session and i've actually seen it on social media people complain that hop session is not a very good ipa and i'm like well it's not an ipa it's a hoppy pale ale and i think a lot of people think hop session it's supposed to have this huge hoppy nose and these massive hoppy characters it's actually it's actually just a hoppy pale ale so for a pale ale hop session is very hoppy mm. um and it's supposed to be that like i like hops but I want to be able to drink a lot of this beer. That's why it's 4.5%. I don't like necessarily like the term Session IPA. That's why I called it a Hoppy Pale Ale. Um, but like I said, Jungle, I think the last batch, our last batch of Jungle sold out in two and a half weeks. Rochelle's a bit worried. She's got to bring more. <laughs> Rochelle's going to be grey before she's fatigued. Do you think... And can, people are getting used to strong Do you beer. think... Yeah. Let, let's make it quite... Uh, let's f uh, get granular here and focus on your customer. I'm talking your specific customer that comes to Banana Jam. Do you think their palates are improving or do you think they want that hoppy flavor or just let's just say flavor or do you think they are looking for a stronger beer? Is, have you noticed differences? I mean, they, I mean, you, when I don't you know, first what do you think, Michelle? I think people's palates are developing and changing. It's the beer that a lot of people are putting out on the market with more hoppy beers. Everywhere I go, I'm finding a lot of IPAs, a lot of hoppier pale ale, session IPAs, all of those sorts of things. Um, very few lagers. Um, and now that's what people have become accustomed to. They want hops. It seems to be like the... Your beer nerd wants hops, definitely. Your beer nerd wants hops. And there is something very satisfying about a a hoppy beer with a certain amount of of like I want to say vuma behind it mm. you know kick. yeah you know you like kick. I've yeah. seen oh look at my 5.2% IPA and I'm like mm, why don't you just call it a parallel I know IPA is very cool and all but let's do it properly you yeah. know let's put our IPAs at 6.8 or 6.5 and up like I you look at the states most IPAs are between 6.8 and 8.2 yeah you know and the guys aren't even even at like in the in the high sevens and early eights some of the guys aren't even calling them double ipas they're just like this is my ipa it's eight percent drink it and it, it's got it's got like a richness behind the the what i love about um i think what rochelle nailed on on jungle was a pure balance between it's not an incredibly hoppy beer on the nose it's dank, 
Mm. It's got this like rich hoppy aroma, but it's not like that explode explosion of hops on the nose. But it's perfectly balanced with the 7.2 percent alcohol, and then the sweet. The, there's like a richness to the body behind it that comes from the crystal tea, the the Simpson crystal tea mm. 50, that just holds up against that alcohol and and the two two hops we use. And it's just we, from when you smell it to when you drink it, it's just the same right through. Like all the the aroma, the uh, the mouthfeel, the the, um, uh, the the high ABV, it all just sits together really, really nicely. Let, let's let's take all those facts, all those stats, let me say, uh, and let's take out out the beer nerd uh, or the or the, uh, the beer fan, someone who who likes those kind of things. Let's look at the average consumer that comes to banana jam. Would you say over the last 10 years, I mean, when, when was the last time you, I think when you started, you, I remember the story you told me you had like Castle Light, Castle, Black Label, Hunter. Uh, no, 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 no. We had... What were your first taps? Jack Black? No, no, no. I'm talking about your first, first taps before Jack Black. We had Hansa Pilsner as our first tap. SAB would not give me anything but Hansa Pilsner and a little on the bar little kegerator thing. Yeah. And Ross walked in in mid 2007 and said, buy my craft beer. And I was like, huh? I was like, okay. He's like, I've started my new business, Jack Black Lager. I will give you a tap. I'll install a tap for you. I was like, go for it. He installed the tap and SAB was like, What's that? Okay, we'll give you Castle Light now. We'll install Castle Light and Black Label. And I'm like, okay, look at that. And we ran those three for the beginning. And then I took away Black Label and put Jack Black Lager and Jack Black Amber Ale. Oh, yes. Which was his second beer. And then, and that was probably in 2009. We moved to the venue we're in now in 20, late 2009, 2010, I think. Yeah. Um, and I went overseas and I did a month and a half in California. I came back and put eight lines in. And on those eight lines went Boston, Jack Black, Darling. Slim Pickens back then. I couldn't fill and cast a light. And I couldn't fill the eight lines. Mm. There weren't enough beers to put eight beers on tap. And uh, that lasted about six to eight months. And within a year, and then I could fill the taps. A year after that, I had 18 lines. A year after that, I had 30 lines. Yeah. And that's how fast it grew. Mm. But yeah, back then it was slim so, pickings. So going back to my question, would, would you say that... The Michelle was still at school. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually. I just started high school. Finishing her school. As you should, children. As you should, kids. Uh, I, want, I just want to know, very simple and obvious, and I'm leading towards it. But, I mean, has the consumer evolved since 2010? Definitely. Especially at Banana Jam, hey? Yeah. So... People are a lot more willing to try new stuff. Originally, like, I remember even a few years ago on the floor, it was a constant... People were always asking for Castle Life, Jack Black Lager. Yeah. Now I actually hear people downstairs going, that looks interesting. Pop and they're a lot more yeah. Oh, yeah, just to, to go it. back, Rochelle used to waitress here before she brewed here. So she knows... It's really great to have someone in the brewery that knows the consumer and knows what they are interested in. And but banana jam is, is different, hey? Uh, we it do, is a lot we've different had, we've, than a lot of the other places. Yeah, like that. we've had we've done craft beer for so long that our consumer mm -hmm. that comes here regularly is a little bit more in tune with different beers. Yeah. But I, but I think hopefully that will trickle over into other businesses and people will get. Expect more than just the Hansa Pilsner on tap. Even though a Hansa Pilsner is delicious if served correctly, I think people should expect a, a better variety, a, a, bigger, a, bigger, a, bigger, a, bigger, a bigger, but also better selection. Uh, not, not just bigger, just Bigger is not always better. No. It's, just, it's good to have... It would be nice to see more different selections... You know, um, good on the bigger guys like Devil's Peak and, you know, there's, and CBC. 
and Darling and people like that who who've got a bit of backing behind them and reach that they can get to, and they can afford to put taps everywhere. I think my wish is uh, that more bars and restaurants would buy their own taps. Mm-hmm. Don't you think, Rochelle? Like it's it is nice how you get to choose. It's not just because someone can install a system for you. Mm. You actually you have a little bit more control over what goes. Well, if you think about it, you're, I'm even, yeah. Your, your customer gets to choose. Think about it this yeah, way. Your, yeah, your customer gets to choose what is popular with them, what they want to drink, and you can put on tap. If your customer so doesn't drink a beer you and you own the tap, you don't put that beer on again. Yeah. Therefore, your customer is choosing, not mm. you. You might think you're making the choice. Yeah. But as a bar owner that owns you, if you have four taps in a bar and three beers are selling really well and one isn't, you don't buy that beer again. You'll buy a different beer. Mm. But it's not you making the choice. Yeah. It's the customer's making a choice about what he purchases. Mm. So when more, when more bars own their own taps, it allows more customers to make a choice, especially let's say you live in town or, or in Harfield Village or wherever, and you go to your local. Um, and you go down to your local and you say to your barman, I'm not drinking that crap. Um, and everyone else goes, we're not drinking that. We like those three beers. Mm. He's going to go, well, shit, I better put something else on. Mm. You've made the choice. Mm. Um, therefore, you get better beer. Wouldn't it be amazing if all customers had better beer in their local? Wouldn't it be unbelievable if just everyone was drinking great beer? I think we're close. Yeah, we're very I, hope, close. I hope we're close. Well, we're definitely close. We're very close. We just have to go downstairs. downstairs. <laughs> Read my mind. Guys, I think we can start wrapping things up. Um, but I would like to say thank you very much. Where can where can people get besides here? Where can people get this unique beer that we had, that that fruity beer? We will have that. We'll have a keg of that new fruity super fruit. Will be on tap at the winter warm up at Jack Black Brewery in Deep River. That's next weekend. On the 27th of On the July. 27th of July. Thank you, Rochelle. I'm very bad with numbers. Is it the 27th of June or July? Sorry, June. 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 Sorry. June. Woodstock Winter Festival 27th of July. 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 Ooh, yes, that's another Austin. festival. The Woodstock Winter the 29th Beer Fest. Of June, I think, to be 29th of June. And I know that the, 29th the, the, the 27th, Darling the Winter Beer Festival is on the 6th of July. I can't, I can't go. I've got a wedding. But then there's the winter. When is the Winter Woodstock Festival? End of, end July. of July. End of July. And then I in August, at the end of August, is Beer Boot Camp. Oh, I've, I bought my tickets. Uh, sure. I think we might all be staying in one house together again. Oh, no. Make sure to bring bacon. <laughs> right. Is that it? That was fun. I enjoyed those beers. Craig, as always, your knowledge uh, and wisdom has uh, been wanting. Michelle, it is an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. You are a breath of fresh air, and in fact, um, quite possibly my favorite, my newest favorite uh, member of ACBC. Aww, I like you, Troy. You can stay. I'm leaving. Greg, I love you very much. I know you do. And to all our listeners, thank you very much for tuning in, for listening, and for putting up with this rain. But you know what? When you're drinking beer, it's, uh, it's okay. It's all good. Are you, are, you, are you doing the social media there, Greg? Surf beer I travel. would actually like to take a photo of us. It's the photo. While, while we're recording, it's fine. Shannon says to me, I must, uh, I must smile with mouth closed and not do cheesy grins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you look awful, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Cheers, guys. That was fantastic, Troy.